Hey you guys, all right, well, here we are, beginning of a new month, it's February, and I'm starting the month green. Two trades, green on both of them, which is great, up just about $1,100. This isn't a crazy, crazy green day, but that was intentional. I mean, sort of. It was intentional to not be super aggressive. Usually big green days are the result of being fairly aggressive, both in terms of share size and the setups that I take. Within the sort of spectrum of setups that I trade, some are higher risk and some are lower risk. And when I'm feeling hot and I've got a good cushion and I'm trying to make a lot of money, I'll take some of the higher risk setups with larger share size. And when it works, it pays off. I can have those big $10,000, $15,000 green days. Of course, when it doesn't work, I can have equally big red days. And I saw my fair share of both last month. So this month I decided to come in uh, intentionally being a little more conservative at the beginning to try to build a cushion, to focus more on consistency and kind of level out some of these big ups and downs that I've had from the last couple of weeks because they're, they're kind of stressful. I mean, it's not a lot of fun to have these, it's yeah, the green days are great, but then the red days that follow. And could I make just as much if I'm just like a little bit more smoothed out or maybe a little bit less, but with less stress? That's kind of what I'm going for, or at least for the first week here of February, trying to build a little bit of a cushion. So my first trade on um, ARTL, um, nice solid trade, but didn't get the first um, breakout. We'll, break, we'll review that during the recap. And then the second one, uh, BIMI, BIMI, up 45%, almost 50% this morning. Big momentum there, but choppy. And at the end of the recap, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about with this little hidden buyer that all of a sudden sparks some interest, the stock pops up, false breakout, and it flushes back down. And we were seeing that on BIMI a lot today, which is kind of disappointing. You don't like to see that type of price action. So um, that we break down live as it happened towards the end of the recap. So uh, make sure you watch till there. And um, as always, if you guys have questions, comments, leave them down below. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And I'll see you for tomorrow's recap. What's up everyone? All right, so we're going to do our uh, midday market recap here for this morning. First day of uh, February, and I'm going to finish the morning up $1,123.10. Kind of a small green day as far as uh, green days go for me, but I'm okay with it. One of the things that I sort of set as my intention here for the beginning of um, February was that rather than doing what I often do at the beginning of a month and try to, you know, hit a Hail Mary pass at the first day or first week of the month so I can get myself into the driver's seat right away, um, I instead decided to be a little more cautious. The reason I always or often get so aggressive at the beginning of a year, at the beginning of a month, or even the beginning of a week is because, you know, I set these goals of annual, monthly, weekly, and the faster I can hit that goal, the sooner I feel like I'm in the driver's seat and I can just kind of coast. And that's a really good feeling. It's the feeling that you get when you finish all your homework and you have the whole rest of the day to just kind of relax. And so sometimes that encourages me to rush through my homework, for instance, to try to just hit that goal as quickly as possible, um, which sometimes means being a little sloppy in the way I am trading. And that was certainly the case last month. And so this month I wanted to kind of start a little bit differently rather than doing that and then potentially going red right away just to kind of, you know, take it a little bit slower, try to find that uh, momentum if, if I saw it and um, if I didn't see it to just be more conservative. So today our watch list was um, pretty straightforward. There really wasn't a lot other than ARTL on the gap scanner that looked good. ARTL was on the gap scanner this morning, gapping up 66%. Now it ended up squeezing on a gap and go set up all the way to 442 and I missed it. But you know, the reason I missed it is because the highest volume of the day pre-market was on a red candle. And I looked at that right before the open and I felt like, hmm, this feels a little risky. You know, if I get in the pre-market high is 360, if I get into that break of 360 after that big red candle, I don't know. I mean, I, this m just might not end up working. It might end up having a, a pretty big rejection. And so as I kind of was watching it out of the gates, immediately it surged up 
to 360 from a low of 337. And I was like, well, now I, I don't think I can buy it 25 cents above the correct entry point. So since I kind of missed the right entry, I just have to wait. And in this one candle, it squeezed all the way to 440 without me. I was a little more conservative on this one. Now, uh, I think for good reason, uh, this was a little bit of a red flag here. So that's, I think that was fine that I, that I did that. Uh, but then I ended up buying this uh, pullback right here. All right, so I bought this pullback right here. We got a quick break back over four up to a high of 418. Uh, but I ended up only making um, $291 on it. It kind of hesitated at four for a second and it looked like it wasn't gonna break. And I was in at 395 or right around there. So as soon as it broke over four, I was like, better just unwind this thing and you know, be green. So got out quickly and that ended up being the right move as it ended up coming back down uh, here. Around this area, I was considering it for a break of VWAP. And then I kind of said, you know, last month I took a few break of VWAP trades and they didn't work out super well. So I think I'm gonna leave that alone. And so I decided to leave it alone and that ended up being the right decision as well. So being a little more conservative today. So that started my day with one winner of $291. BIMI, B-I-M-I, is the next stock that I traded and the only other stock I traded. It's currently coming back up uh, to, let me see, it just hit 685. So I'm gonna put this one right here, BIMI. There we go, 685. All right, uh, and by the way, no trades in my TD Ameritrade account today. Um, you know, not that I didn't want to take a trade. I just, ARTW, I didn't, wasn't, didn't work, and I was just a little hesitant on. BIMI, B-I-M-I, by the time I took my trade, I just, I was just focusing on my main account. So the first spot we were watching, B-I-M-I, and this is its pre-market chart, kind of not perfect. A strong day yesterday, or on Friday, a little pullback here, then a surge up with news pre-market. So the bell rings and it drops from 586, it flushes here down to a low of um, 491. Let's watch this on this breakthrough. Let's see, high a day is 715. Now something I'll say on BIMI that made me really nervous today was a, seeing a lot of what I think were uh, false orders, uh, fake orders on, on the, the, the level two. And that means, um, like right now, I could I, I have a lot of buying power in this account. So I could easily buy, um, let's see, I've got over $100,000 in this. So, you know, let's say 20,000 and this, and I have margin on this. So I could probably buy 50,000 shares of the stock. So I could put an order here for 50,000 shares at 715. And all of a sudden, people would look at that and be like, oh my God, 50,000 share buy order, that's, that's a lot of strength. Now, if I legitimately want to get in, that's fine. But if as soon as the stock comes down, I cancel my order, then that's called order spoofing. You're putting out fake orders with the intention of scaring people and, and manipulating the market. And you're not allowed to do that. And it seemed like that was going on today on, on BIM. Uh, this may end up giving me an opportunity for a trade in the um, uh, TD account after all, but we'll see. The high right now is 40. So typically right here on this micro pullback, I would be probably punching it long right about here at 36, typically. Um, that's kind of that little micro pullback just underneath the, the uh, high a day. Now this is, a so you can see how it's pulling back right here. And my stop would be about 20. So it's kind of the dip here down to 23. Yeah, so see, that was right that I hesitated. With 8 million shares of volume, it's a little more crowded. You know, it's a time of day that I think maybe trader, traders are going to be a little more cautious. Um, so anyways, um, so when I traded this one, um, this was back here, right in this area. I was watching it right here for the break of 40. And I looked at it, it was actually the break of uh, 35. And I, I said, I like it, but I'm not sure. It's below high of day. Until it breaks through high of day, I think I might leave it alone. Then it breaks. It pops here up to 55 to 60. It then does a little pullback. And this is where I took a trade right here, a pullback trade, and riding that momentum here up to 617. It does another pullback right here. I ended up adding a little aggressively on uh, this pullback right here. 
And on that drop, I gave back half the profit I made right here. So I went from being up about 600 on it to up only about 300. And then I got back in as it squeezed back up here uh, on this breakthrough seller. So kind of choppy. And I didn't do as well on it as I might have liked to have. I was sticking with smaller share size um, with the intention today of having a green day, even if it's a small green day, and just starting to build a little bit of um, kind of psychological momentum going into the month of uh, February, the new month. Um, so let's see. Um, so we've got the high here up to 715. Uh, then we have a little bit of pullback consolidation. And I ended up um, obviously not trading uh, this move here. So $831 on BIMI over the course of maybe like six trades on it. Um, so one, two, three, four, maybe five trades on it. I don't know. But in any case, um, I was trading with uh, 2,000 shares and uh, 1,500 shares and then doubling up to uh, 3,000 and 4,000. I think my biggest position was 6,000 shares and that was on my first trade. And uh, it, it didn't end up being a, the best, the easiest trade. It was kind of choppy. So um, yeah, that's kind of where uh, where I'm at today. Not the easiest day. ARTW or ARTL was certainly nice out of the gates, but I kind of didn't capitalize on it as well as I might have wished I had. This is now forming a one minute pullback here. So the first one minute candle to make a new high over 33. You know, technically that's a setup. I just would be a little bit concerned about false breakouts. Usually, I like buying the first one-minute pullback after a fresh five-minute breakout. However, um, because this stock faked me out a couple times today, I'm not as confident that it's going to be clean. You can look back here and you can see how during this move up, we had a topping tail candle here here, here, and here. So each time I hit the highs, it kind of did a little fake out before dropping back down and even did it right here. So that seems to be the pattern with this stock, which means buying micro pullbacks and breakouts uh, on this stock is proving to be fairly difficult. So, you know, it's an important thing to be able to have a sense of awareness about. And maybe on another stock that setup would work really well, but on this one, it's just not really the way to, uh, to the way to approach it. So now, you know, and again, high day volumes on a red candle back here on the five minute. This is a nice breakout, but not on higher volume. So a little bit of a divergence there as it makes new highs, but on lighter volume. So now maybe we'll see a five minute pullback and a little consolidation. Perhaps there'll be more opportunities. It doesn't have resistance until 820 on the daily chart. And then from 820, it's got room up to 1199. But you may have some people that are under the water from either this day or this day. And as it comes back up here, maybe trying to get out of the trade for a smaller loss than they had a week ago when it was way down here at you know, $2.60. So ultimately, until it breaks over 12, it's probably going to have a little bit of a little more choppiness. And that's one of the reasons I really like um, stocks that are kind of like true or more um, well-defined turnaround stories, maybe more like the way this was before that move, where it had you know almost a year of consolidating at the lows, lots of time to kind of shake people out, and then boom, you get that breakout. When you have a recent move like this, this can sometimes help the stock because people are like, oh wow, look, it recently made this like you know, move from $2 to 12 bucks, it went up 600%, it has the potential to, to do that again. So people will get a little excited. But, um, you know, when, when you look at it in this context of the fact that it's still only retracing back up to about, you know, just over 50% of the move, you're going to have a certain percentage of people who did the hold and hope kind of routine with this stock. And as it's coming back up, they're going to want to be getting out, you know, uh, whatever for a smaller loss. So, uh, and then, of course, you'll have some short sellers who look at this and say, well, look, last time it popped up, it dropped, so I'm going to just start shorting it. So that's where you start to run into a little bit of an issue. Um, that may be one explanation for why we've seen some bigger sell orders on this one. Um, but, 
in any case, uh, a nice little start to the week here. And, you know, last week I had, it was like the last two weeks have been a roller coaster with, you know, $10,000 red days, $20,000 green days, $6,000 red days, $8,000 green days, you know, just very volatile, um, which, you know, it's certainly fun to have the big green days, but those red days aren't as much fun. And I think today, if I'd been, um, a little more aggressive, I, I actually probably would be in the red. Um, just because I probably would have been ending up being the one buying these breakouts, adding for a move higher, and then not getting it. How many halts today? Zero. No circuit breaker halts today. So that's also a little bit of an indicator of uh, the volatility that we're seeing in the market right now. This right now, at this point, um, we've got eight, let's see, five, four, three, two, one, zero. So that five minute candle closed a tiny little baby candle, baby little candle up there. It's hard to trust candles like that because it just shows the stock is just, it's kind of floating on air up here, you know, just way up high. It hasn't done a proper pullback, um, but it's also, so it hasn't done enough of a pullback to sort of establish a low risk entry point. Um, you know, so it's it's not really a setup that I would typically go for for an entry. You know, granted, it is up 45% on the day. Clearly, people are interested in it despite um, the kind of choppy price action. So I might be leaving some money on the table, but I'll live to trade another day. It's a tempting one to try to hit in the TD Ameritrade account uh, just because, you know, on this. But actually, realistically, at $7, I could only buy 500 shares. This really isn't the right stock to trade in TD Ameritrade. So I'm just going to forget about that, leave that alone. I don't. I really don't want to take trades unless I can buy at least like 800 or close to 1,000 shares. So let's watch this. So there's 35 on the ask, 34. There's a, there's the big buyer of 14,000 shares. Now, is this going to do a false breakout? Look at that. The buyer is gone. I didn't. I don't know if any shares fill. So that, to me... That looks like that kind of, you know, manipulation where someone puts out a really big buy order, convinces, makes people think, oh, there's strength in the stock. People are buying it. Someone wants to buy it. And then <laughs> pulls the rug, pulls the carpet. you got to be really careful of that. You'll, you, once you read level two and you've been trading for a while, you start to see that stuff more and more. Um, you start to see it more clearly, not necessarily more often, but it, it becomes more clear when it's happening and you start to learn when it's time to step away. So stepping back here with money in my pocket, it's a good, good way to start the week. All right, that's it for me. I hope you guys have a great afternoon if you keep trading and I'll see you back here first thing tomorrow morning. Bye everyone. Hey, did you know that I go live every single morning between nine and 9.15 to stream my pre-market watch list? Subscribe to the channel, press the bell for the alert, and you'll get the notification.